Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to the CEC Edusat Live Lecture. Dear friends, we are pleased to announce that we are very successfully running our series on marketing management and so far number of lectures have been conducted. All the lectures are there for you on YouTube. Taking the series forward, today we would be talking on product decision. Dear friends, we would like to also inform over here that we would be carrying multiple sessions on product decision. Uh, so far as today is concerned, first of all, we would be talking on product level product classification product mix and product decision later on and for this discussion we have once again with us in our studios dr swati agarwal dr swati agarwal is assistant professor in zakir hussain delhi college university of delhi so let's welcome our guest dr swati agarwal and let's try to understand and grab more and more knowledge through her hello ma'am welcome to delhi lecture good morning all today i'll be talking about product decisions as product is the first element in the marketing mix so entire marketing planning starts with formulating the decisions related to the product only a company whenever it is offering its uh, product to the market it sees to it that it is concerned with all the decisions which are pertaining to a product be it related to the attributes branding packaging and labeling or product support services for that matter but to begin with i would like to start from what do exactly we mean by this term product the this product uh, meaning initially it started with a very narrow definition which states that it is a set of tangible physical attributes assembled in an identifiable form if we take product uh, in a narrow sense then we can say that different brands of computers which are available in the market they all are same good that is they are just the personal computers and we have been assigning this generic name to all the goods that are there around us be it a steel insurance mobile phones cars every good has got its own generic term but do customers only buy the physical attributes whenever they buy a product no that's not true actually it goes beyond this physical aspect of functionality what customers are buying nowadays is the bundle of benefits or in a broader sense we can say that product goes beyond the physical object as customers they are not really buying the attributes rather bundle of benefits to satisfy their needs here i could i would like to take one example of refrigerator suppose if the customer goes to a store to buy a refrigerator he would be interested in asking about the style design color and several other factors related to a refrigerator and not just confined to the physical aspects of it now if we talk in the terms of marketing product goes beyond the bundle of benefits it is something which can be offered to the customers for attention acquisition use or consumption and basically it is something which can satisfy a need or want of the target market now what do we mean by this want satisfaction product is not something which is confined just to a good or a physical attribute it involves services also in the form of banking insurance hospitality restaurant all these services are surrounding us nowadays product definition also includes persons suppose if a political party is offering a candidate and is asking for the vote at that particular point of time that political candidate becomes a product because as per the definition which has been given by kotler it has been stated that product is anything that can be offered for attention acquisition use or consumption Similarly there are several tour and travel agencies nowadays which are offering packages for Goa Mauritius because holiday season is round the corner so at that particular point of time all these places they become the product 
even the organizations can also be a product in the sense that blood donation organizations if they are asking for the donors to donate blood and if they are telling them the importance of donating the blood that at that particular point of time these organizations they become the product and finally i can say an idea can also be a product idea of say family planning idea of safe driving don't mix drinking and driving or whenever a company is offering uh, benefits of not smoking so all these ideas they become product at that particular point of point because they want to grab the attention of the audiences similarly a definition has been given by edsel walker and stainton as well who states that product is a set of tangible and intangible attributes which also includes in itself packaging color price quality brand seller services and reputation that means whenever the customers they are buying a product they are buying something more than the attributes they are buying want satisfaction in the form of benefits that they expect to receive from the product and today as more and more products have become more customized so companies they are offering experiences to the customers via their products all the coffee cafes that have been set up what they are doing is they are providing the experiences to the customers in the form of the a time which they spend in that cafe coffee chain or for that matter all these disney movies or theme parks that have been uh, built up around us they are providing experiences to their customers and thereby experiential marketing has become the important tool nowadays by which is used by several marketers this product is something which is not on one particular level there is a series of levels and every marketer tries to move on to the ladder whenever they are offering any product to the customers a product offer can be conceived at three basic levels as per kotler the first one is the core customer value which moves on to the second level by the actual product and finally we have the augmented product so in planning its market offering marketers they need to th think through several all the three levels as all these three levels they add more value to the product by adding several inputs in the form of say advanced features design better packaging maybe ma more meaningful communication so if we talk about the first level in detail that is the core customer value it is something which is associated with the fundamental benefit or the service that the customer is actually buying for example if a woman is buying a lipstick is she only buying a lip color no that's not correct what she is doing is a famous company claims that in the store we in the factories we make cosmetics but in the, but in the store we sell hopes because women has got several aspects related to the lipsticks which she would be buying not only as a cosmetic but she might want to look good similarly digital cameras every uh, person who is going for a vacation for an outing every household every family they try, they would love to carry a digital camera with them so what is the fundamental benefit which they are getting out of this digit cam that means they can record their scenes their persons or the objects which could create memories for them which could last for a lifetime so this is the fundamental benefit which they are deriving out of the digital cameras that means they are creating memories for themselves similarly if a hotel guest wants to check in a particular hotel what is the fundamental benefit that the person is getting out of that checking in is the rest and sleep because we all have this basic purpose and due to that only we get check into any hotel at the second level the marketer they try to convert the core value into the actual product that means all the core benefits are converted to the actual product for that they need to develop several product features design quality brand name and packaging if i again take the example of digital cameras they have been offered with the variety of picture quality screen sizes pixel and zoom features similarly if a person is checking into a hotel hotel room should be clean 
it should have fresh flowers a remote control television set this is the basic expectation of a customer whenever he is checking into a hotel and if that basic satisfaction is not basic expectation is not fulfilled the person will not be satisfied with the offering at the third level the marketer they offer additional customer services and benefits in the form of workmanship after sale services installations and warranties to the customer and through these offerings they try to augment or add on to their basic product if we again take the example of digital camera if the company provides instructions to the person as to how to use the digital camera or whenever there is a need a quick repair can be provided that is something which can be added on to the product offer and it will be a welcome step by the customer similarly nowadays wifi is a must thing if a hotel guest is checking in and if the hotel provides free wifi or a bowl of fresh fruits or a welcome drink to the customer the product will be a success in itself and nowadays most competition actually takes place at the augment augmentation level or augmentation stage because competitors are trying hard to provide more and more augmentations to their product something which is beyond the expectations of the customer and they know if their offer can click the customers then they would be in a win win situation after this now i would be talking about the product classification whatever products we are using they can be classified on several aspects basis on the basis of durability tangibility or how the product can be used tangibility is something which talks about that whether the good can be touched it can be seen or it can be felt so on the basis of durability and tangibility product could be classified into three main categories first one is the non durable goods non durable goods are nothing but they are the tangible goods that normally are consumed in one of few uses if we talk about toothpaste or shampoo or soap they are the routine items they are consumed quickly and they are purchased frequently by the customers so marketer need to make these goods available in as many locations as possible since it is a routinely purchased item they can charge only a small markup on these items as branded products are preferred by the customers so if advertising is more then automatically it will build, uh, it will induce the customers to try the product and which might later on uh, uh, creates brand loyalty for that particular product at the second classification we can talk about the durable goods durable goods again are the tangible goods but they normally survive many uses if we talk about refrigerators or say personal computers the automobiles that we are having or the clothes which we wear all these come under the category of durable goods since these goods are used again and again they are quite high in price and the risk all associated with such goods is also quite high as compared to non durable goods so more and more personal selling is required to convince the customer and more and more services should be provided by the marketer in case of such products as they command a higher margin more seller guarantees are required in case of durable goods finally at the third level we have the services which are intangible intangible is something which we cannot see which cannot touch which we cannot feel services at the same time are inseparable that means we are producing and we are consuming the service at the same time if we talk about a hair stylist he is providing his service and at the same time the consumer is consuming that service so more important is the quality supplier credibility and adaptability in this sense in this case of services these products are variable and at the same time they are perishable in nature so a banker a teacher an educator for that matter a doctor the credibility actually weighs high if we talk about services at the next level entire products that we could see around us they could be categorized into two basic types on the basis of use 
either they could be the consumer products or they could be the industrial products. If we talk about the consumer products, they are intended to be purchased for household use. That means whatever goods we are using in our day to day lives as customers or consumers, they are the consumer products. Since customers are scattered widely, they are widely and geographically dispersed. So these goods are normally distributed through longer channels. And the main marketing strategy which is to be used for consumer products is advertising, packaging, branding and middlemen. If we talk about industrial products, they are intended to be purchased for further production. They are you or they are used to enable the organization to function smoothly. Some such products, they also form an integral part of the products which are supplied by the organization for resale. Uh, we can talk about capital goods, we can talk about installations or equipments, all these are the examples of industrial products and they are basically classified on the basis of their relative costliness and how they enter the manufacturing process. Now I will start with the consumer products classification that means on the basis of how and where the consumer is consuming the product or from how and where the consumer is buying the product, consumer products can be classified into four main categories. One is the convenience products, second is the shopping products, third one is the speciality products and finally we have the unsought products. If you start with the first one that is the convenience products, these products are usually purchased frequently, immediately and with the minimum of effort. Say milk, bread, soaps, toothpaste, all these routinely purchased items which we buy on regular basis comprises or make the convenience products. Since the consumers purchase these products on repetitive basis, they buy them from the nearest source. The cost per unit of such product is not very high. Customers normally prefer branded products. Marketing strategies for convenience products mainly focuses on intensive distribution through long channels as the products they are purchased frequently. If consumers don't get the required product from the nearest source, they will move on to the substitute goods. Companies image is more important in say, case of such products because no, more, mostly branded products are preferred by the consumers. As the margin of profit is not much higher in case of convenience goods, so the responsibility of advertising falls on, falls on the manufacturer and after sales services does not play much role in case of such type of products. At the second level, we have the uh, uh, sorry, convenience products can further be classified on three aspects, staples, impulse products and emergency products. If we talk about staples, these are the products that we bought often routinely and without much thought, say milk or for that matter soft drinks. We have been purchasing it uh, day in and day out. So we do not put in much effort in purchasing such items. At the second category, of convenience products, we have the impulse products. These products, they are bought quickly without any planning or search effort. And these products like chocolates or magazines, they are widely displayed by the manufacturers. So just by seeing the product, the customer decides whether to buy this product or not. And finally, third type of convenience product could be emergency products, which are purchased when a need is urgent. Buyers, they are more intent on buying a solution to their problem rather than going for the right quality or the image of the product. For example, suppose if a person is having a cut in the finger, he needs a band-aid. So he won't be searching for several brands or for several stores. Wherever and whenever he could get one, he would be applying it on the wound. Similarly, if a person is standing, say, in a, during summer and sudden downpour occurs, the need for umbrella arises automatically. So it becomes the emergency product at that particular point of time. So marketers, what they, they are doing is they try to put these products in the possible 
outlets where that need could be emerged of the customer. Second type of product under the consumer products are the shopping products. These are the products that the customer in the process of selection and purchase characteristically compares on the basis of suitability, quality, price and style. All the uh, durable goods or you can for that matter the non-durable goods that are surrounding us say furniture, the electronic appliances, jewelry, our automobiles, mobile phones, they all come under the category of shopping products. These products are bought by the customer after search effort in the sense that the customers they get the pleasure in comparing the features of several products. They go store to store and they try to compare one feature with the other. They try to find out that which store is offering the best deal in terms of price, in terms of quality, in terms of features. And after that they consume or they buy such products. So consumers they give time and effort to plan these purchases. So in case of such products, personal selling is more important as these items are less frequently purchased and the salesman can convince the customer by telling in details about the functionality of the product. Best or appropriate marketing strategy for such type of goods is the selective distribution strategy because customer they prefer to going to stores to buy such products. Since the margin of the profit is high, dealer's image is more important in case of such products and the responsibility of advertising also falls on the dealer for shopping products. Promotional tools like after sales services, they play a very important role in case of shopping products. These products could further be classified as homogeneous or heterogeneous products. If we talk about the homogeneous products, they are similar in quality but different enough in price to justify the shopping comparison. Basically, customers they perceive that more uh, that several variants of the car they are more or less similar in quality, so they go by the best price. But marketers or the firms, they try to emphasize and promote their product differences to avoid head-to-head -head price competition in case of homogeneous products. If we talk about the heterogeneous products, these shopping products are conceived to be different by the customers. So customers, they try to inspect for the quality and suitability of those products like furnitures or uh, clothes. So the firms, they should carry wide assortment to satisfy the individual taste and they should be more focused on the quality in case of heterogeneous products. At the third level or the third category of consumer product is the speciality product. This is the product with unique characteristics and brand identification for which a significant group of buyers is habitually willing to make a special purchasing effort. Shopping for a speciality product doesn't mean comparing. Instead, Consumers want the product and they are willing to search for it. So it's the customer willingness to search, not the extent of searching that makes it a speciality product for them. If you talk about the designer dresses or Mercedes or any convenience or shopping good can become a speciality product for that particular point of time for that particular customer. Because the product has achieved a level of brand loyalty in the minds of the customers that customers they are not willing to accept the substitutes of those products. And if they don't get it in a particular store, they might put in extra effort to go a mile to get the product of their choice. So in this particular type of products, quality is the main aspect which should be taken care of by the marketer because a slight displacement from the quality might lead to loss of customer. Limited distribution and advertising is required as customers are already aware of the brand and they would be buying it no matter what. Product warranty and product support services could be a good marketing strategy in case of speciality products. At the last level in the consumer product categories, we have the unsought products. Products that the customer do not know about or know about but they are not willing or they are not normally thinking of buying. If we talk about air purifiers nowadays we have got such a polluted air in 
Delhi. So air purifiers is something which is must. Or for that matter, insurance policies. All these insurance companies, they are claiming that it is a must for every individual, irrespective of their age, that they should have insurance policies. But unless and until the customer, they realize the importance or they are convinced as to whether they go in for those products, they are not readily uh, ready to buy such products. So for that matter, the most important marketing strategy in this case could be the personal selling. Because... Personal selling or the salesman can convince the customers about the importance of having or using such products. Many a times even non-profit organizations, they are trying to sell their unsought products. If we talk about this Red Cross Society which are organizing blood donation camps in various institutes and even in educational institutions for that matter, what they are doing is they are trying to convince the customers or the donors the importance of donating blood. So, for that matter, unsought products could be uh, made important via their way of communicating with the customer. At the next level, we have the industrial product classification. Depending upon the relative costliness and the way the product is entering the manufacturing uh, manufacturer's final product, industrial products could be classified into three main categories, raw materials and components, capital goods, supplies and services. The first one if we take in detail is the raw materials and components. These are the products that enter the manufacturer's product completely. That means raw materials could either be in the form of farm products or they could be in the form of natural products. If we talk about farm products, they are grown as by the farmers in farms such as fruits, vegetables, livestock, wheat. Such products are usually given to the intermediaries. They grade those products, they try to pack them, they try to distribute it, they try to sell it. So every single activity is done through the intermediaries in case of farm products. Not much advertising is required, but many a times uh, the companies or uh, the particular organizations which are dealing with such farm products, they might come up with their campaigns. Uh, I can take one example, say National Egg Coordination Committee, they periodically uh, undertakes their promotion campaign for, under, uh, for consuming eggs every day because it has got high nutritional value for every age group. So they have this... Uh, Punchline Sunday ho ya Monday, Rose Khao Ande. So, such claims uh, basically they try to advertise their product and they try to convince the customer that they should consume their products on daily basis. Raw materials could also be in the form of natural products, products that are available in nature in the form of, say, coal, in the form of timber, petroleum, or fish. All these form the raw materials for several products and these products are usually supplied by the suppliers to the industrial users. If we talk about the components, they are the finished or nearly finished items that are ready for assembly into final products such as wire, plastic or textiles. Quality is very important because the components themselves, they form the part of the final product. And price and service are the major marketing considerations for such type of products. Next is the capital goods. These are the long-lasting goods that facilitate developing or managing the finished product. They could either be the installations or the equipment. If I talk about installations, say buildings or land rise, they are usually bought directly from the producer through sales force after long negotiations. And suppliers sometimes they include special services within the installations at no extra cost. Suppose if a dentist has uh, ordered for some machinery or for, for some particular um, item or a chair in their uh, dispensary. Uh, so if the company is installing the machinery and at the same time if they are uh, telling the person as to how to use it at free, uh, free of cost, that becomes a part of the installation. And the second uh, category of the capital good could be in the form of the equipment, which includes hand tools, personal computers or desks. They don't become the part of the finished product, but they help in making or managing or developing the finished product. 
sales force is very important for uh, such type of products rather than advertising and price and services are the major marketing considerations for equipments lastly we have the supplies and services they are the short term goods and services again which facilitate the developing or managing the finished product it could be char- uh, categorized into two forms one is the supplies and the other is the maintenance and repair services supplies is something which is Uh, we, which we can compare with the convenience good category because they are usually purchased with minimum of effort they are marketed mostly through the intermediaries they have the low unit value and the large number of geographically dispersed customers are there for supplies again price and services are important market considerations for supplies if we talk about maintenance and repair services such as window cleaning or legal advice they are basically supplied by the manufacturer under a separate service contract so in this case suppliers reputation and personnel are important considerations so with this i conclude that entire products that we use in day to day life they could be categorized either as the consumer goods or as the industrial goods <laughs>discussing about the product mix decisions what is a product mix it is the total assortment or the set of all the products and items that a particular seller offers for sale to the buyers if you talk about hus product mix it comprises of several range of bath soaps fabric wash beverages beauty products deodorants and food items so all these items in totality comprises of the product mix of a company Product mix decisions could be varied or it has four important dimensions. First one is the product mix width. That means the different number of product lines which a company carries. For example, if we say that the company has got personal care products, home care products and food items in their product mix, that these different lines would be the product mix width of a company. The second important dimension is the product mix length that means the total number of items in the product mix that the company offers within a particular line comprises the product mix length say if we talk about the personal care products if, uh, uh, which a company offers within that personal care the company might be offering personal wash skin care products cosmetics hair care products all these will comprise the product mix length of a company and the third important dimension is the product mix depth the number of versions offered of each product within the line such as if we talk about a particular product soap it comes in several variants we have got liquid wash we have got bar again we have got 
पीच मिल्क और फॉर दैट मैटर से फूड एक्सट्रैक्ट आर देयर इन दी सोप सो ऑल दीज कम्प्राइज द प्रोडक्ट मिक्स डेप्थ ऑफ अ कंपनी and finally the fourth dimension is the product mix consistency that means how closely related the various product lines are in their end use production requirements distribution channels or some other way next we have the product line decisions a product line is something which is a group of products that are closely related because they perform a similar function or they are sold to the same type of customers or they are marketed through the same channels or they might fall within the given price range so if there is any change in the product line of the marketer it will lead to change in the product mix and vice versa a company's product line could vary from food cigarettes lifestyle products education products to personal care product line managers they constantly need to know the sales and profit of each item of their product mix or uh, sorry product line so as to determine whether they want to build maintain harvest or divest any of the line which is not giving them much profits at the next level we have the product item it is a specific version of a product that has got separate designation in the sellers list say one particular variant of a soap one particular brand of a soap which a company is offering will be termed as the product item marketers constantly need to appraise their product lines for successful implementation of their marketing strategies they need to add new lines either by adding new brands or through brand extensions or by adding variants in the form of new colors or pack sizes or new product forms in their product mix just either to increase the market segment or to have a larger base of customers for their products so a company in order to expand and strengthen the business either could go for product mix expansion which comprises of line extension and mix ex- mix extension if we say a company is entering into line extension that is they are increasing the depth within a particular line suppose if a particular cosmetic company claims that they are offering their products for kids that addition is a form of line extension for that particular company or if a company is manufacturing atta and they are offering a new variant in the form of diabetic atta for diabetic patients that also constitutes the line extension at the second level product mix expansion can also occur by extending the mix that is by adding a new product line to the company's present assortment if the uh, Uh, company which is offering babies products at johnsons they are entering into offering contact lenses that is a new and a different line which they have offered now to the customers so that uh, uh, includes or that forms mix extension now the new lines that are being added by the company in their existing product lines it could be related or it could be unrelated the decision is purely on the marketers as to whether they want to use the same brand name for the new extensions they had that they are providing for the existing products or they want to go for new brand names for several new items that they have added several car companies they are coming up with new models every year within the same brand name and they are also coming up with several uh, variants of their car models w- with the new name so this product mix expansion can happen both ways another way to strengthen business could be through product mix contraction that means the company what they are doing is they are eliminating an entire line or they are simplifying the assortment within a line that means they are discarding those items from their product mix which are either giving low profit or which have turned out to be unprofitable the main reason is 
to increase the profitability of the firm by offering less assortment to the customers. Company can also strengthen their business by altering their existing products because many a times developing, developing a new product is quite a challenge and it is uh, expensive also and more risky also. So, a better variant is to uh, make certain or small alterations in the existing products which the company is offering to their customers. Here packaging plays a very important role because just by changing the design and the color and the size and the style of the package, company can give a new and a different unique look to their products. For example, these uh, lately these uh, namkeens are being available in Ziploc packs to sustain the freshness of the product and at the same time, they are providing a very unique look to the uh, uh, look of the product as well. Lastly, product mix can also be altered through quality variations. If we talk about changes in the quality, that can be brought up either by trading up or by trading down. Trading up is something which can be done by adding a higher price prestige product to a line in the hope of increasing the sales of existing lower priced products. Many a times, companies which are offering their lower price uh, variants, they try and they add on some higher variant to their products. Say Starbucks coffee, people they have been doing this or absolute range have been doing this trading up because what they are trying to do is they want to reshape or they want to give a new look to the product that they are offering and they want to enter to a new segment by providing trading up. Similarly, quality variation can also be done through trading down that is adding a lower priced item to the line of prestige products. Many a time designers they are offering their products at the price which is not affordable by the routine or regularly purchased items or the customers. So, what they are doing is they are coming up with their variants in the form of lower price products, say labeled by Ritu Kumar, they have been doing that lately. They are providing the products which is affordable for a normal customer and in their online mode, they are offering huge discounts to the customer so that every person can afford designer dresses with the help of this trading down. Now, the greater challenge that the marketer is facing is whether they should use the same brand name or different brand name for trading up or trading down. That will basically depend upon that how much prestige the uh, marketer has earned in their previous categories and accordingly they can just carry forward with their final decision. Now, the next segment under the product comprises of product decisions. If we talk about product decisions, while designing the products, several decisions need to be taken by the companies about the product attributes, whether the product should be branded or not, how to package and how to label a product and the final decision which a company takes related to product is the product support services. Today, I would be touching upon the first and the foremost part of the product decision that is the product attribute decisions. If we talk about product attributes, developing a product involves decisions while developing the basic product and also the benefits that their offer will be providing to the customer. These benefits are communicated and delivered through product attributes either in through quality, features, style or design. These are the four parameters through which product attribute decisions could be taken by a marketer. If we talk about product quality, it is a set of features and characteristics of a good or service that determine its ability to satisfy needs. Quality is very important parameter it could be evaluated depending upon whether the actual experience with the good or service that the customer has got meets, falls, falls short or exceeds their basic expectation. 
Companies nowadays they are involved in total quality management program. They have been working hard to improve the quality of their products on day to day basis. Several company countries even they have taken up this ISO certifications so as to improve the quality of their products over time. Second product attribute is related to the features of the product. Product can be offered with varying features. and features are a competitive tool for differentiating the company's product from the competitor's product so companies they need to identify new features for their product and they also need to identify that which particular features they should add to their existing range as there could be several additions that can be made by a company only those features could be added which customers value highly in relation to the cost that they are paying for their feature third product attribute decision is related to the style and design design is something which is much more than the style as style describes the appearance of the product style basically provides attention and it can also provide pleasing aesthetics but they have got nothing to do with the performance of the product design on the other hand refers to the arrangement of elements that collectively form a product marketability of a product can be improved constantly by redesigning the product and making it easier to operate one can upgrade the quality through revising the designs marketers can, marketers can also improve the appearance of their product and they might also reduce the production cost by constantly working on technological advancements that have been taking place and thereby improving the design of their products second set of decisions which a marketer take once the product has been made is the packaging decisions these packaging decisions are very important and some of the marketers even say that it is the fifth p along with the product price place and promotion what do i mean by this packaging packaging normally involves all the activities of designing the container or wrapper for a product and the container or a wrapper is nothing but it is a package packages might have up to 3 layers a toothpaste comes in a tube which forms the primary package of that product that tube comes in a cardboard box that forms the secondary package and a dozen of that cardboard boxes are in a corrugated box that becomes the shipping package so these are the three levels of packages which are available for different types of products that are being offered by the marketers so now what is the importance of these packaging decisions why at all the packaging decisions need to be taken by the marketers packaging basically involves promoting protecting and enhancing the product it can be important both to the marketers and to the customers and it is intended to serve several vital purposes first purpose is protection of product a package protects a product from its source that is from the manufacturer to the customer it has to be enrouted so during transit and also while using the product package might help to protect the product second importance of packaging is it can enhance the product that means it can make the product easier and safer to use several variants have been introduced by the marketers for packaging they have got that no no uh, spit drought Uh, or spout position of the uh, containers or uh, they try to provide innovative packaging so that it can enhance the appeal or aesthetics of the product next importance of packaging is it can help in promoting the product also because nowadays most of the products are being sold at retailing retail stores and a good package can help the customer to notice the product at the point of purchase if we talk about the functions of packaging packaging could provide protection to the product 
it could protect the product from the losses which could occur from contamination at the time of transit or due to evaporation due to spilling and also while also the spoilage of the product so most of the drug manufacturing producers or uh, uh, companies or for that matter food manufacturers they are trying to put their products in the packages which are tamper resistant second important function of packaging is convenience package provides convenience while storage while is in use if we talk about the reusable jars which can be reused again and again by the households or self contained applicators of say sh uh, shoe polish or uh, we have this glue sticks which have the self contained applicator they provide lot of convenience to the customers at the same time convenience could be provided to the uh, retailers as well because the in the stores if the product is properly packaged then it can store easily package also provide economies by preventing the monetary loss that could occur to the product while in transit or in use it also provides the opportunities for you reusing the package again and again and also by communicating the key benefits of the product with the customer package provides the base where labels could be attached and for that matter we can say that the color of the package sometimes they act as the billboard in a store because several products are being laid down so if a particular product has got that appealing color say green or dark red then automatically customers they can just by having a look at the color uh, they can relate the product with a particular brand package can also help in promoting the product in the sense especially nowadays due to cell service more and more stores are coming up around and around 50 to 70% of purchases are being made in the stores so cost, uh, packaging provides us with the task of the salesmen in the sense that they are they serve as the silent salesmen to the customers they by just having a look at the package customers might get influenced to buy that particular product also this importance of packaging as a promotional tool has been increased due to consumer affluence customers nowadays they are ready to pay premium price for the better better packaged products company and brand image is also very important and it can be promoted through a better package it also provides innovation opportunity because the types of materials that are being used in the package or for that matter uh, uh, the contents can be uh, reused or uh, we have this glass jars uh, which are not safe and easy to or convenient to use these uh, uh, they have got that refill jars or refill products which can be uh, bought at a lesser or cheaper rates so these all these are uh, uh, help to promote the product in a better manner nowadays packaging has got the positive appeal because good design package can provide aesthetic appeal to the customers and it has become more useful than the salesman because a person's loyalty can be challenged can be question mark but not the packaging several package policies and strategies have been used by the marketers on routine basis and these decisions need to be constantly taken up because unless and until the company or the marketer change the style of the package or uh, they package their product line they will not be able to appeal to the customers so important packaging policies and strategies are first is the packaging the product line the main decision which a marketer needs to take is whether they want to provide family package for the several brands or the products which they are offering or they want to go for one individual packaging for all the variants which they are offering in their product mix family packaging is more suitable if the product has got high loyalty or if a product has been highly accepted by the target market over the time it is always advisable that the marketers should change the package either through new materials or by introducing uncommon shapes 
or by providing innovative closures to their packages. Packaging policies and strategies also involve decisions in the form of multiple packaging. That means nowadays many companies, the uh, cold drink companies or for that matter the juice companies, they are placing several units of their product in one container which helps the marketer in increasing the total sales of their product. And what they are doing is the shape of the package or the container is built up in such a manner that it has got front opening. One can easily just pour their hand and they can just take out that one particular tetra pack of juice. So it has become easy and convenient for the marketer to provide packaging details. So today I have tried to finally I would like to uh, end up by saying that though packaging is very important, it has got so many uh, promotional aspects, protection aspect, but at the same time it has been criticized because of the depletion of natural resources that have been occurred due to packaging. But this particular aspect has been partially addressed through the use of recycled materials or biodegradable materials in packaging. Customers nowadays, they want convenience. They want that throwaway packages should be there and at the same time, they are concerned for their environment also. So for that matter, government have tried certain ban on use of certain type of materials, say plastics, for the use of package. Finally, packaging could be deceptive also. The contents which are being uh, shown in the form of the size of the package, actual contents might be much lesser. So, due to, through government regulations, that form of criticisms could be overcome. And finally, it has been criticized on the pretext of expensive, that packaging normally consists of half of the cost of the product. But the amount of losses that it reduces either during transit or in use, package has got its relevance in today's market arena. Thank you. Adhisna, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much. Today we had a vivacious session and through this session we have learned a lot and dear friends we believe that you might have uh, having certain queries and uh, you would like those queries to be answered. So do write to us at info.cc at the rate nic.in. Definitely we will try to give answers to your questions the next time when Dr. Swati Agarwal visits our studio. I guess your feedback is very very important for us. If you want to have a session on particular topic which have uh, not yet covered under the series marketing management then also you can uh, definitely contact to us this lecture is going to be uploaded on youtube very soon keep watching us keep writing us we will be meeting again soon till then take care goodbye thank you ma'am thank, thank you, you once again